Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, robotics, dynamics, mechatronics, etc. This particular video is dedicated to the body plots of integral and derivative transfer functions. That is, you will learn how to quickly sketch body plots of the transfer functions that look like 1 over s and s. Now, some of you might stop me and ask me the following question. Why do we need to learn to sketch body plots by hand since today we have MATLAB, we have Python and we can easily plot body plots by using a simple function such as plot in MATLAB? The answer is the following one. The main motivation for learning how to sketch the body plots by hand comes from the fact that this knowledge will develop in students the basic intuition of how dynamical systems behave in the frequency domain. Before I start with the explanations, I would like to mention a few things. Those of you who are my subscribers or who follow my work know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains equations, text, and graphs. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. First, we have to introduce a few important concepts. Transfer functions of dynamical systems are usually denoted by W of S, where S is a complex Laplace domain variable. Then, the sinusoidal transfer function is given by this equation, where J is the imaginary unit and omega is the angular frequency measured in radians per second. That is, the sinusoidal transfer function is obtained by substituting s by j omega in our transfer function. Next, we can transform the sinusoidal transfer function in the polar form, and the polar form is given over here. The quantity m is called the magnitude or the amplitude ratio of the output sinusoid to the input sinusoid. It's defined by this equation. This equation might intimidate you, however, this equation is relatively simple. This is because our sinusoidal transfer function can ultimately be represented as a complex number and the complex number has a real part and it has an imaginary part multiplying j. So we simply take real part, we square the real part, then we take the imaginary part, we square the imaginary part, we add these two quantities together and we take the square root. Graphically this means that we are basically computing a distance from our complex number that has a real part and imaginary part to the origin. So this line over here represents a distance from the origin to our complex number and the length of this line is equal to m and that's the magnitude. This quantity over here, phi, is called the phase and it's defined by this equation. Again, this equation might look intimidating, however, it's not. To illustrate this equation, again, let us consider a complex plane and let this be our complex number. The complex number has a real part and it has an imaginary part. This distance is m and phi is nothing less than this angle over here and obviously tangents of the angle phi 
is imaginary over real so phi should be inverse tangent or arc tan of this part over here imaginary over real and that's exactly what you're seeing over here next we need to define the log magnitude the log magnitude is defined by the equation number six so what do we do over here we take the logarithm with the basis of 10 of our magnitude and we multiply it by 20 and as the result we obtain the log magnitude here it should be mentioned that often in graphs log magnitude l is actually denoted by m of db where db are decibels or amplification however in this post we will use l as the notation now that we have defined the magnitude, log magnitude and phase, we can explain the body diagram. Essentially, the body diagram consists of the following two graphs. The first graph is the plot of the log magnitude and the second graph is the plot of the phase. Both of these graphs are plotted against the angular frequency or in some cases just the frequency on a logarithmic scale. So let's start with the body plot of 1 over s. Here, I will write W is 1 over S. The first step is to obtain the sinusoidal transfer function. So we substitute S by J omega and as the result we obtain 1 over J omega. Next, let us transform this expression. We can multiply the numerator and the denominator by J and J and as the result we have j in the numerator and in the denominator we have minus omega we can write this expression as minus 1 over omega multiplying j the next step is to extract the magnitude and phase from this expression there are two ways to do that the first way and the easiest way is this is to simply transform this expression like this, we can write 1 over omega multiplying e to the power minus pi over 2 times j. Now, you might stop me here and ask me the following question. How did you obtain this expression from this expression? Well, this is not complicated. You simply have to visualize this complex number. So let us visualize this complex number in the complex plane. Here is our complex plane and here is the complex number or better to say is it here? Where is the complex number? Hmm, let's stop and think about it. We can see that we have minus 1 over omega times j. So the complex number is over here. So I'll just use a different color and here's our complex number. This part over here is minus 1 over omega. Obviously the magnitude of this complex number is 1 over omega and the angle is minus pi over 2. So we can use a polar form of the complex number and we can obtain this result over here. Next from this expression we can easily see that the magnitude is 1 over omega and that the phase is minus pi over 2 in radians or minus 90 degrees. The second way for obtaining the magnitude and the phase is to use this formula. So let's apply this formula to our problem. This is our complex number its real part is 0 and the imaginary part is minus 1 over omega. Consequently, the magnitude is the square root of 0 squared plus minus 1 over omega squared. And this becomes 1 over omega absolute value. And since omega is always positive, since the frequency is positive, we obtain 1 over omega. Let's look at the phase. We need to compute inverse tangent of imaginary over real. 
the imaginary part is minus 1 over omega and the real part is 0. Consequently, this is equal to minus infinity and inverse tangent of minus infinity is minus pi over 2 or minus 90 degrees. Next, we need to compute the log magnitude. The log magnitude is equal to 20 times logarithm with a base of 10 of m. And this is equal to 20 multiplying logarithm with a base of 10, 1 over omega. And this is equal to minus 20 logarithm with a base of 10 omega. And consequently, here's our log magnitude. Next, let us sketch the body diagram of our log magnitude and phase. Notice first over here that magnitude is denoted like this. However, I'm using L as the notation for the magnitude. This is because this graph is exported from MATLAB and MATLAB actually denotes L by magnitude and in brackets dB. So keep in mind this thing. Okay, so on this graph, that is on the upper panel, we will sketch the log magnitude. First of all, you should notice that the frequency omega is in the logarithmic scale. This is basically 1, this is 10, this is 100, this is 0 0.01, actually 0 0.1, and this is 0 0.01. And we have on the y-axis L in decibels. So this is 0 decibels, this is 20 decibels. 20 decibels corresponds to amplification of 10. Because if you put 10 over here for omega, you will obtain minus 20 decibels. Or if you put 0 0.1 is omega, you will obtain 20 decibels. So keep in mind this fact. Obviously, log magnitude is a simple line. Let's find two points on this line so we can sketch this line. First of all, we can substitute omega is equal to 1. So here is omega equal to 1. And let's see what's the value of L for 1. Obviously the value of L for 1 is 0. And here's the point. So we have the first point. Let's find the second point. We can find the second point by substituting omega for 10. And as the result we have 20 logarithm of 10 with the base of course of 10 and L of 10 is minus 20 and consequently here's the second point. So our log magnitude looks like this and then you can simply draw a nice straight line that connects all these points. Of course, in my graph, this doesn't look like a straight line. However, this is actually in practice a straight line. How about the phase? We can observe that the phase is always constant and it's equal to minus 90. Consequently, you just need a straight line that's equal to minus 90. And here's my best attempt to draw a straight line. And that's it. This is the Bode plot of 1 over s. 1 over s is actually an integrator and a few things can be observed over here. As the frequency decreases, the gain increases because remember that L is actually the magnitude and this is the gain of our system. So for low frequencies, we have a huge gain. However, for high frequencies, we have a small gain. Phase is negative, this means that the output lags the input for minus 90 degrees. So let's go back to our post and over here you can see a nice graph showing the log magnitude and the phase response of the system, that is showing the body plot of the system.
Next, let us sketch the body plot of S. Here is our transfer function, it's equal to S. The sinusoidal transfer function is obviously j omega, and from this expression, we can find that the magnitude is omega and the phase is 90. The log magnitude is given over here. It's obviously 20 logarithm of m, and m is omega, and we obtain the final expression for the log magnitude. The phase is 90 degrees. We can observe that this is again a line, and two points on the line are for omega equal to 1, we obtain that L is equal to 0, and this is the point. And then for omega equal to 10, we obtain L equals to 20, and this is the second point, so it's a simple line. And the phase is 90 degrees. This is a body plot of a derivative action. We can observe that derivative action has a small gain at low frequencies and it has a huge gain at high frequencies and consequently this amplifies the signals. On the other hand, we can observe that the phase is leading. So the phase of the output will lead the phase of the input and this system is actually predictor. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.